Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear students, in this lecture we will be covering the function of the galvanic cell. The presentation includes the following. The prerequisites, the definition of a galvanic cell, the materials used to prepare a galvanic cell, the procedure that we should follow, an interpretation for the functioning of the galvanic cell, its function, the identification of anode and cathode, cell representation, role of salt bridge, and the voltage produced by the cell, in addition to some remarks and an assignment. First of all, we have to revise some information. We all know that a redox reaction is a spontaneous chemical reaction, which means it is a reaction that occurs by itself without any external intervention. We also know that a redox reaction is a reaction that involves both oxidation and reduction. The oxidized reactant, the one undergoing oxidation, is also called the reducing agent or reductant. It is the species that loses electrons. While the reduced reactant, which undergoes reduction, is the oxidizing agent, also called oxidant, it is the species that gains electrons. In this picture, you observe a galvanic cell. What is a galvanic cell? It is also called a voltaic cell. It is a device used to convert chemical energy into electric energy by a spontaneous redox reaction, by a reaction that occurs by itself and involves both oxidation and reduction. For the preparation of a galvanic cell, we need the following materials. First, we should have connecting wires, a ZN strip. We use here ZN because we are going to prepare a ZN CU galvanic cell. So we are going to use a ZN strip and a CU strip. We also need a solution containing zinc sulfate, which is a solution that contains the ions corresponding to the uh, strip that we have. Here we have a ZN strip. The solution should contain ZN2 plus ions. We should also have a lamp between the two connecting wires or a voltmeter. It might be a In order to prepare our galvanic cell, we have to follow the following procedure. We have to dip the ZN strip in a beaker containing its corresponding ions, which are ZN2 plus ions. So, the ZN strip will be dipped in a beaker containing solution of zinc sulfate. The copper strip should be also dipped in a beaker containing its corresponding ions, and here we use a solution of copper sulfate. The two metal strips will be connected to each other through a lamp using connecting wires. We have to associate also the two half cells or the two beakers that we have by a salt bridge that contains KNO3 solution, yeah, which means that the salt bridge should contain electrolytes. The anode and the cathode of the galvanic cell. 
to the anode as we know it is the place where oxidation occurs it is the place where the electrode loses electrons in this case zn is our anode zn is going to lose electrons in order to become zn2 plus whereas the cathode which is the electrode where reduction occurs it is the electrode that gains electrons and here cu2 plus which are found in the solution gain electrons in order to form cu so examine the functioning of the galvanic cell From the preceding changes, we can identify the anode and the cathode. First of all, at the level of the strips, the anode strip decreases in size due to the loss of electrons. It becomes thinner, so its mass decreases, while at the cathode, the strip becomes thicker. Its mass increases due to the gaining of electrons by the ions found in the solution. The solution at the anode becomes darker due to the increase in the concentration of positive ions we said that zn is losing electrons to become zn2 plus so the positive ions in this solution increased so its color becomes darker whereas at the cathode the cu2 plus ions have gained electrons so there is a decrease in the positive charges or in the positive ions so the concentration of the solution decreases that's why its color fades also, the electrons flow from the anode to the cathode, whereas the current flows from cathode to the anode. So, the electron flow and current flow are opposite to each other. Now, we need to write the overall equation of the chemical reaction taking place after the galvanic cell is set to function. To write the uh, complete chemical equation, we have first to write the uh, half equations occurring at the two half cells. We start with the anode half reaction, where Zn is changing to Zn2 plus by losing two electrons, and at the cathode, where Cu2 plus gains two electrons to become Cu. Due to the conservation of a uh, number of electrons, the number of electrons gained is equal to the number of electrons lost. Here we have two electrons lost, and here we have the two electrons gained. They are cancelled with each other. So the complete chemical equation will be Zn plus Cu2 plus giving me Zn2 plus plus Cu. How to write the cell representation or the cell notation? First of all, we have to start with the anode following by the salt bridge, then the cathode. The metal at the anode, it becomes a metallic ion. The first metal that we have, it is uh, Zn, it becomes Zn2+, plus. then the salt bridge, followed by the metallic ion which is found, it is the Cu2+, plus. then Cu, which is the metal that we have at the cathode. So, the cell notation is written from the place where electrons are lost to the place where electrons are gained following the electron flow from anode to cathode. Regarding the salt bridge, we need to know that the salt bridge is used in order to ensure the current flow between the two half cells and to maintain electrical neutrality. The electrolytes in the salt bridge move according to the following. The anions move towards the anode while the cations move towards the cathode. To explain this, we notice in the anode half cell that there is an increase in Zn2+. plus. So the anions, NO3- minus, migrate from the salt bridge to compensate the loss of electrons. Whereas at the cathode, the quantity of Cu2 plus decreases, so the cations 
K plus, which are found in the salt bridge, move towards the cathode. Regarding the voltage produced by the cell, we know that metals have different tendency to lose electrons. For example, here we have three different metals, Ag, Cu, and Zn. They are placed according to their increasing tendency to lose electrons. When the tendency to lose electrons between two metals increases, the voltage produced by the cell increases. Here I have a question which says which element has the lowest tendency to lose electrons. In this case, it is Ag, since it is, placed, it is the first metal to be placed on the axis of increasing tendency to lose electrons. Which two metals should be used to have the highest voltage? Do you think that they are AgCu, CuZn, or AgZn? In this case, Ag and Zn will give the higher uh, voltage since the galvanic cell that we would be formed between these two metals is formed between the one that has lower tendency to lose electrons and the one that has the maximum tendency to lose electrons. Here I have some remarks that I have to mention. We have to know that the reaction doesn't occur in the absence of the salt bridge as the salt bridge, as you know, is used to ensure continuity. Uh, the reaction between Zn at the anode and Cu2 plus at the cathode took place by indirect contact, which means that the two uh, strips used are found in different compartments. When we say an oxidizing power, we mean the tendency to gain electrons. When we say reducing power, it is the tendency to lose electrons. The metal that has the higher tendency to lose electrons will be placed at the anode because it is more reactive. And in this case, Zn is the anode because it is more reactive than Cu. Finally, I have an assignment that you have to solve. I hope you understood the whole lecture. For any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. Good luck.